unregularradio.com. Back live. Two hotheads where activism happens. And uh, we're here with the Massachusetts Pirate Party. The party of open, open government, open culture, open innovation, and people first. And we have the Captain James and uh, my dear friend Lauren here in the studio. So welcome. Thanks a lot for having us on. Yeah, Thank thanks for being here. Um, so you guys are, the, okay, you're the party of open, specifically. Why, why do we need to be more open in open government open. okay we know the answer to that but what do you <laughs> what, how did you it's self-explanatory that's yeah. pretty self-explanatory but what, what started the, the pirate party and the party of open well the pirate party itself was started in Sweden over five years ago uh, partially because of some of the efforts they their government has been doing at the behest of the United States government um, in order to crack down on people who were sharing our culture our movies our music and things like that uh, we started here. Back did that have to do with the Pirate Bay? Yeah. Well, they did because they started right. They were like pretty tricky, and they tried to create their own like autonomous government zone right out in Sweden. I wouldn't say that, but certainly kind of. they got a big boost when <laughs> they, they tried, tried to, like to shut down later. the Pirate Pirate Bay. Yeah, we have yeah. a phone call right now too. Oh, we do. <clears throat> Are they on? Oh, they're oh, not. Okay. We lost it. All right. All right. Well, we're getting phone calls. Six one seven six zero six four one two two. Since nine eleven, we've had an issue where the government has been having more and more secrecy, keeping more and more things away from us, but at the same time demanding more and more of us to give up our privacy. Mm-hmm. So that's the exact opposite of what should happen. The government right. should fear us. We shouldn't fear our government. Mm-hmm. And so the fire, Pirate Party was formed specifically to make that a reality because the Democrats and the Republicans, they don't do that. They enabled, they re-enabled the FISA bill that would allow the NSA right. to snoop on all of the digital communications that we have. And there was, yeah, I mean, and there was a lot of, what was it, SOPA and, and stuff that there was like a, a whole... Um, you know, like a pretty concentrated effort to to tell the you know Congress not to pass these these anti uh, you know anti free internet laws and stuff and and uh, and and there was like this whole outcry and then they're like oh okay like we'll back down and then kind of like snuck in a secret bill that did basically the same thing correct is that <laughs> well SOPA's dead they tried SOPA's to get, dead but they read yeah they they tried to get CISPA out there which would allow corporations to give. Uh, they basically snoop on the wire and then be able to give that data to the government ostensibly to fight hackers and things like Quote that. Unquote, yeah. um, but thankfully, that's hackers also are just died. Hackers internet te- terrorists, so we got to go after them, hackers right? Hackers on steroids. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, isn't it kind of a? It's just like a similar concept of like, oh, they're they're terrorists online we need to do anything we can to to go to war with them and the information they exchange well, there's a few there's a few different excuses they use to pass mm-hmm. these kind of bills one of them is security and cybersecurity. um one of them is you know save the children from porn that's, that's another <laughs> one, or or from child porn Marijuana. and um <laughs> You know, other one is uh, copyright. Oh, all the artists aren't going to get paid, you know. So those are like the three major, major excuses. That's what I call them that they use to try to pass these sorts of bills. And uh, all of them, you know, if you actually look into the issues, they're, you know, bad reasons to do any of that. I mean, it's not worth it. You know, there's there's always new ways to, you know, these are, you know, if you look at the, some of the problems aren't really necessarily even problems. And some of them, there are better ways to fight it than that. Yeah, especially with so, the artists. Situation. Yeah, that's like not really. It's like, like I create know. content. And if I put someone's song in there, YouTube now has a way to flag that. And they have a way that the artist can recoup through advertising, just like any of us do. Like, why don't they work on coming up with equitable solutions for everybody so that uh, me as a content provider aren't worried about putting songs out and getting censored and losing my YouTube account? This is crazy the way that they're not, the the industry, especially the record industry, the music industry, is not. The RIAA and the NPAA. Being smart about it. Yeah. They want to extort college students yeah, for hundreds of thousands that's of dollars. It is. Extortion. Absolutely. I mean, come on. This is keep like up with the tech. moms that, like, yeah. the, yep. the last mom who still has Napster installed on their life. <laughs> like, yep. what's going on? It's crazy. What threat are they addressing there? I don't get that. They're just, they have, they had a nice thing going, but yeah. the world changes. Business models have to change. And instead of trying to legislate, you know, we believe in free market and stuff, right? So don't try to legislate solutions to what happens and is evolving naturally in the free market um, because it's, you know, 
other in, like with the internet there there are other ways to to re, you know for artists to make money and you know uh downloading music actually increases a lot of revenue for artists because they don't make as much money from selling records as they, they get do money from exposure yeah from yeah. And, and from uh as merchandise an artist, and that's live correct. yeah live performances right so, so and a, that the actual attendance of live performances has increased due to or you know, I don't know. Correlation. I mean, most of these, but most of the new artists coming out are putting out their music online for free. Oh anyway. yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know. Well, the problem is for most artists, uh, as Cory Doctorow has said, it's one of obscurity. You know, you're not going to make millions of dollars if nobody knows who the heck you are. Right. And so traditionally, it's been that you can go through the gatekeepers, the record companies, the movie companies, and they made you a star. But we don't need them anymore, and they need to find new ways of making themselves useful to artists because artists will ultimately go around them they will connect with their fans and they'll give their fans as Mike Masnick of of uh, Tech Dirt has said a reason to buy and a reason right. to support them yeah exactly this is a um, a story that I saw this morning it was actually on the MIT newspaper and now I just opened up Yahoo it's like the number one story in Yahoo it's a uh, online activist programmer Schwartz dies in New York he's uh, a young guy that was one of the three owners of Reddit yeah he founders, was up on yeah. some fe- charges too, as well. Do you have any comments on that, or give us kind of a, a history of what's going on with that? Um, I it's still pretty fresh news and pretty sore. Uh, but I send all my condolences to everyone who was close to him. Um, what was he up on charges for? He was up on charges related. He to... He was sharing academic papers um, from <laughs> JSTOR, which they ended up making public domain like two years after. Recently, last and, three days. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so three days before he killed himself, unfortunately, they made. Them I thought they made some of them public before that. I know there was a big, big opening of something like right. two million. If so, I what is he? Oh, okay. He was facing federal <coughs> charges. Uh, no, state charges. But I, it was uh, what happened was MIT and JSTOR both dropped the chart. They didn't want to press charges anymore. But the uh, Massachusetts attorney, that the prosecuting attorney, continued to press charges. Who was that? The guy that's uh, resigning. Um, damn, I've got his name. Leone. I you don't. Know? Ac- I don't actually know. We'll find out. Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, come on. The, uh. Yeah, no, it's it's really dumb. Uh. So I mean, he went onto the MIT network, as, or he's accused of having gone onto the MIT network and set up a laptop that downloaded through their open Wi-Fi <laughs> <laughs> uh, all of these sets of documents and then making them available. You know, <clears throat> we, we you know we talk about open innovation. Right. If we're having scientists who cannot share those documents to one another, if they have to pay JSTOR or they have to pay some other company that publishes journals or something in order to make these things available, we're cutting down on cancer, cancer treatments we could discover. We're cutting down Mm -hmm. on new new drugs um, because we're we're hindering innovation. And so what Aaron was trying to do was open things up. And that's more of what we need. He's a hero in my mind. I think so, it's too. It's such a good to, to share information. I mean, I'm a copyist, so that's like my religion. How, <laughs> how, yeah. how can I mean, how, these attorneys, the, like the state attorney and the district attorneys, they go after things like this. Right. Why aren't they going they after let, the banksters myself? Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. That's exactly. I mean, they, they what trolls. about John Corzine? Right. Why, why, why? I mean, nobody in Massachusetts was affected by his fraud through MF Global when they stole everybody's money, and he's still out there free and no charges. I mean, shouldn't you be focusing on much bigger fish? It's just insane. Absolutely. What are, what are some of the other uh, issues? Like, I know, obviously, o- open, like uh, Heather was saying, to open up, open up things, get the information out there. But uh, are there certain individuals that you really want to highlight today? I know we've focused on Barrett Brown on the past show. Are there other individuals that you think are really kind of getting a screw job? Or any, you any mean Bradley Manning, perhaps? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, what about yeah. Bradley Manning? Because there's some news on that, too, right? Um, yeah. Uh, do you want to say this? Well, I mean, he's, he's still going through his court case. Um, and then in, in terms of, I mean... He's accused of having leaked documents to WikiLeaks, which by rights, since they are the property of the United States and we own the United States, are technically ours to see. Um, <laughs> yeah. <coughs> you would think. Wow. Uh, <coughs> Not to mention there's war crimes in there, which you're supposed to report. Right. Um, so he's, a hero, he's, again, another hero who's, who uh, the Obama administration is going after 
rather than um, thank him for the information that he revealed, which even people in the Pentagon, even people in the State Department have said have caused no problems whatsoever to anyone. Yet at the same time, we've had the Bush administration went and, and outed people who were CIA operatives, none of those people are in jail. True. None of those people who are, were under and solitary they did a, confinement. They did it for political ends. Not, Absolutely. Dick not, Cheney's not in jail. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Lauren, you brought up, that was a good point that you made, that it, it, what he did exposed war crimes. Mm-hmm. And we have whistleblower, federal whistleblower, I can't even say the word, whistleblower laws that they don't enforce. Like, they're not, they're supposed to reward whistleblowers, protect them, and the federal government just basically isn't following that programming. He's a whistleblower in a lot of respects, I would think. Well, they're doing the opposite. They're doing the opposite, yeah. Yeah. Obama has a war on whistleblowers, even though he claims to be the most transparent president ever. I mean, it's just complete doublespeak. (laughs) I mean, he's gone after more, twice as many whistleblowers than the entire, than the past presidents combined. Than Bush. Yeah, than all of them combined. That's yeah. And this is, the ge- this is the guy who said he was in favor of transparency. Yep. There was a small victory this week uh, with Bradley Manning. He did get um, 112 days, I believe, taken off whatever, right, yeah. whatever life sentence or whatever they're yeah. going after. Consecutive. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was, yeah. Multi-generational. It, but, but the good thing about it was that the judge did agree that his treatment in confinement was, you know, ridiculous. And I don't know if he agreed it was torture, but it was cruel and unusual or whatever. It seems to be, yeah. I would call it torture. No, it is torture, yeah. absolutely. I'm not sure if the judge used the word in there. And they do, said, do do that. The federal... Oh, yeah. I mean, absolutely. They, Solitary system, confinement is torture. Yeah, they I, torture you. Yeah, I mean, even even not just whistleblowers or somebody as big as Bradley Manning, Regular but there people. are, yeah, there are hundreds of thousands or tens of thousands of people in solitary confinement. Coercion. And, they call yeah. it coercion. Yeah. I said that right. I mean, even, even post post charge like you know there are people sitting in the box in prison which yes. to me that's 23 hours a day in a box that's that's how you know we get mad when we put animal like people don't want to eat meat that's been kept in cages you know we want to eat right. free range meat but we are allowed, we're allowed to put people there you know well, that's the ultimate threat i mean it's the ultimate threat of isolating you from you know if you, you don't know, cooperate from, yeah exactly that's but, uh, that's the worst possible fate they're already <laughs> in jail it's <laughs> <laughs> yeah right yeah exactly <laughs> You know, that's just uh, revenge, <laughs> making them look bad. Yeah, we don't ha- we don't have a rehabilitative justice system. We have a uh, punitive <laughs> Heck one. No, that's, that's true. <laughs> Let's waste some more money. <laughs> throw you know, throw some more people in jail that disagree with us. As long no, as we, we privatize the uh, prison prison industry. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Give them all the nice little kickbacks and uh, contracts and stuff. Wouldn't it be nice if the federal government and the state police and the local police actually try to reduce crime? Right. <laughs> Did their job? like this. They came up with... You mean like decriminalizing marijuana? Yeah, right. <laughs> maybe like that. You know? And maybe like on this issue to like go to some of the... Like, you know, when you have a Barrett Brown or you have this Schwartz, that you go to them and say, we want to work with you in some ways. We want to set some guidelines. We want to... Like, it's so much... Like, we did the same... Did, did, like I mean, in they Cambridge, do that. Like in Cambridge, we do this we, in the city. We do this with gangs and gang leaders. And Boston Mayor Tom Menino does the same thing. He meets with the gangs to, to to quell the peace. If there's real issues, why aren't they reaching out to that community to try to work something out and come up with some sensible legislation? And if there is any, you know, I mean, they're not doing that. They're going to war. Oh, I thought you meant like ask them to snitch. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. The we, we don't want that. them doing that. Treat them like <laughs> human beings. To right, say, right. you know what, you are, you are. We look at you, Barrett, as someone that actually cares about the world. He does. We yeah. may not agree. We may think you're breaking laws because we have to enforce these laws. We don't create these laws, but we want to figure out a way that we don't have to cage you for thirty years. But why would they do that? What's, yeah. what's their real incentive? I to mean, make the world a better place. Yeah, well, and they save, also went after money, Occupy that was trying to make the world know, a better place. I know, but that's the, like, I think that there are some people that have uh, the best intentions in the government. Absolutely. And, and I think that they have to wake up and, and really judge, like, what, are, what, what is the government actually doing and what could they be doing? They, they go to war. They throw people in jail for 30, 40, 50 years to kill somebody over the things that we're talking about. Come on. We need to get some pirates in the government. I know. That's, Absolutely. You know, that's so our aim for yeah. 2014. Yeah, that's what I was going to mention. I, I want to know because it says, you know, your pirate party, you have registered voters that, right, under the pirate party. Right. Any person, when they fill out their voter reg- registration form under political designation, you just write in pirate, click the, you know, check the checkbox, mail it in, and they become a pirate. So does wow. that mean that you're going to nominate some candidates for president? 
for the next uh, round? Uh, I was, you know, I was a green in a past life. I ran for treasurer uh, under the Green Party cool. and Green Rainbow Party in 2002 and 2006. Um, Very cool. I, I've seen where by focusing on the high level offices, you get distracted from the lower level wins that you can get at local well, like office. Council, you know. So council. our focus is. I mean, I, I have this dream state of rep. running 100 pirates for state representative because if we can do yeah. that, we'll actually have more than the Republicans. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that'd seriously. Be, uh, yeah, that'd be awesome. But to do that, we Way need more. people who are willing to you need step signatures. forward and at least get themselves on the ballot. Yeah. Uh, that's the first step. And yep. February, next February uh, 2014 is when uh, the nomination papers come out. We're going to have a convention in our own... Uh, conference in June, uh, and we're going to try that and teach people. Would that be in Boston. We're looking at the Boston area. Awesome. We haven't haven't settled it yet. Um, we had one. We were the first one in in the United States, as far as I know. Certainly in Massachusetts, back in last year in March. Um, and then we want to get. We want people to run because great. it's the only. You know, we there are lots of groups doing great things um, in in their community, but they're say nonprofits. You know, basically, for most people, it's the Democrat, Republican, occasionally Greens and Libertarians. You know, we believe the pirates can be a political force in Massachusetts, but it's going to take people willing to run. I Maybe guess. even for U.S. Congress, there's there's nine nine congressmen who are not necessarily in uh, in our favor. So. Sure, and it, the thing about running too, it's you don't expect to win, but what you expect to be is to get press. Absolutely. To reach people, to build community. It's such an easy thing for one person to do, to run for office. I 200 mean, signatures. That's yeah. all it takes. So Yeah. I, and it's been done, and we've done it, and we can do it again. We, maybe we got to get some candidates. Uh, well, so, maybe so. we should run. <laughs> some people. Maybe we should run. Will they? Will we do it under our, our real names or under our radio names? Why, are, why not? A little of both. I think it, well, you have to do it what, <laughs> know, whatever your register, little... whatever your name is on your voter I'll be a registry. What if I change my voter registry? <laughs> <laughs> well, you can change your name. My <laughs> can. Yeah, there you go. Because I don't want to confuse people now. <laughs> <laughs> Can't have that. Don't think about. Well, this. you know, there's also a you know prominent. We've had a few prominent politicians on the show, namely uh, Vermin Supreme. So you might no. want to get in touch with him. <laughs> He could be a figurehead. We should have a pony He's a party. Guy. He's a nice pirate silhouette. Party. There is a pizza party in Massachusetts. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's all kinds of pea parties now. Pony party, pizza party, pirate party. There you go. Although I'll Why point, can't I'll, we combine all three? That's like <laughs> every child in the world would just go for that instantly. <laughs> it's like every eight-year-old is like, yes. <laughs> so <laughs> <a> go vote. <laughs> <laughs> how can people help you out? How can people get involved? How can people run for office with the Pirate Party? Where, where would they find you? How would they get involved? Well, we're at masspirates.org. Anyone can find us there. We're on Twitter and Facebook as Mass Pirates. Um, in terms of, you know, first, registration, right? We need is, you know, if we can get, um, if we get 1%, which we are far away from, uh, of all registered voters, and we become a permanent party with ballot status with our own primaries and fun stuff like that. Um, how many? How many do you need? Forty thousand, about one one percent. <laughs> yeah, we're a long way, but that's okay. <laughs> all right, Little, small steps. Let's just keep going. Keep yeah, going, okay, right? Okay. Uh, keep growing. That's the point. Um, people can volunteer. They can give money. Uh, they can try to start locals. I'm working on starting a local in Somerville and Cambridge. Um, you know, we need people to be active who are willing to, you know, basically carry the weight and build a party. We had a great contingent at Pride, uh, Boston Pride oh, Parade. That's really fun. We were at Freedom Rally, had a great table yeah. there. Yeah. Um, we had you a know, crypto party. We had a crypto, yeah, we, ha we, we did a crypto party with uh, a whole bunch of other groups. What's where, a crypto party? So a crypto party uh, was is basically where people, well, Lauren, you explain it. So a crypto party is a gathering of, um, you know, hackers and, uh, or people who are good at, you know, security on the internet and people who aren't, and we teach them how to protect themselves online using different, you know, different software, open source software and, and stuff like that. Um, we had it in Somerville. Awesome. And it was we had really good attendance. We had people there from Tor uh, and other places. I forget. Some <laughs> some folks from Occupy yep, as well. From Occupy, yeah, we ACLU. Yep, 
Easily. Nicely helped. Oh, if you do that yep. again, you got to let us know because I, I need help. Yep. It was, it was great. <laughs> well, and we're this looking is, to have more. actually we're a global movement. More. Crypto right. party. Um, you know, the pirate party just happened to it, it aligned with our stuff. And we're like, we got to support this. This is great. Um, so uh, on top of the, you know, election and and party stuff is the main focus. But we do like to do activism stuff too, like pride and crypto party and, and freedom rally, stuff like that. Awesome. Yeah. Fantastic. Right. I mean, the, the, the thing to remember is at this moment, the National Security Agency is going and pulling in all of the data that goes over the network's of the United States that goes through the networks yeah. or on the networks of the United States, which basically means if you're not encrypting your communication, they've got it in a, in a oh, they've yeah. got it someplace. They're building a giant facility Utah. <laughs> in Utah uh, to store all this stuff. You know, theoretically could store a hundred years worth, and they can always buy more hard drives um, of data out there. So your communication for the rest of your life may the government may have for you. So it's important. To be able to know how to protect yourself, so we're looking at having more crypto parties uh, in October, September, just after Freedom Rally. We're looking to have a cryptocurrencies for people who know about Bitcoin or cool. Learn yeah, about tell us some more about that. We're really interested in that stuff. We we've been covering that a lot on our show, and we're going to get into it even more later with the uh, the Somerville Stock Exchange and stuff. But the alternative currency and and finding ways to go outside of you know the typical economy. And, and get a little bit, I don't know. So tell us a little bit how, how people can, can do that. or Well, how you well the big it. one is Bitcoin, and I think right. you can just go to bitcoin.org, and there's a lot of stuff there. But basically what it allows you to do is send a trans, you know, financial traction, a transaction to someone else. It's public, but who's sending it is all, it's just a number. And so you can't necessarily trace it back to to someone else and so to some degree it's uh at this point it's sort of in the stage of more of an asset than a currency you might buy stuff for but you know wordpress.com you can go and pay for your um you can pay for your uh services through that for your blog there you can use bitcoin there are other services virtual private networks that will take that as their currency as well you know we've got PayPal, MasterCard, and Visa, American Express. So you basically have four companies that do the vast majority of all the financial transactions right. in the world, and they're all American companies. You know, we've got those companies that, through the government, not even passing a law, just saying it would be a really good idea, they shut down 90% of the money that went to WikiLeaks to, for them to support their activities. And so... That's that's an issue where we have a small centralized group of organizations with government backing that can limit our freedom. And so looking for other alternatives as to ways we can buy and sell is an important thing. Awesome. Cool. Well, I was just checking out your website. It's, uh, again, mass, M-A-S-S, pirates. Dot O-R-G. A lot of information on there. You guys have meetings scheduled where people can come check you out. January 27th in Correct. Framingham. Yep. Um, and we also have IRC meetings if they want to do it online. We online have those meetings. weekly. Yep. And it looks like, do you guys have a radio show or something? Encrypt, encrypt to Live? What is that? Is that maybe the online meetings? Oh, uh, th so those, we did do videos of some of the talks at the crypto <coughs> party. So you cool. can go on. Um, there's a couple others we need to get up. So you have a YouTube channel. We have a YouTube channel. We also Excellent. put the, some of them put, you know, one was put up. Um, by Occupy, another one was put up by some other per, some other folks and things like that. Awesome, and you can take uh, our clip from today and put it up there if you want. Yeah, we'll have a video for this. So, so that's Creative Commons then. Oh yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> I, you know, I gotta fix that because we used to put everything up as Creative Commons, but like I don't know, they changed it on YouTube. I don't know how to change it back, but we'll figure everything it out. on our shit is Creative Commons. Yeah, okay. post it everywhere. Post, we want to post it everywhere. Yep. Got my word on that. Our <laughs> word. <laughs> Your word's all that matters, Mike. Whatever. Yeah, it's fine. right. Right. NBD. Oh, yeah. I'd be done. <laughs> I'd be done if I don't have Heather. <laughs> we always do. And this. calm. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. And, and some awesome guests and awesome yes. friends. So got, thank yes, you to yeah, thank the you. Massachusetts Pirate Party. I hope you guys stick around for a little longer. We got, we got more stuff coming up. In a little bit, we got to talk about. We have a quite about, active. Uh, sorry, we've got a quite active year. This year is going to be even better than the last year. Yeah, I tell us, tell, tell us about some other stuff. Is, is there anything else that we should know about? Any upcoming events that you didn't mention, or uh, are we all 
Are we all up to date? I'm so. working on, um, there's sort of a nonprofit that's still in stealth mode called the Campaign for Digital Fourth Amendment Rights. Um, the website is warrantless.org. And they, I like that. Yeah, they pretty much align with the Pirate Party. And we're working on setting up an event um, in the late March time. And, and we think we'd like to, you know, unite with the Pirate Party on that. Um, so... I don't know. Look, look for that. That's going to be coming up. I'm not sure quite what that event will entail just yet, but probably talks and stuff. So be good. There may be some crypto party yeah. stuff mixed in. Yep. So we'll see. Stuff I like want to go to some a cool ideas. Party. Yeah, we got to go to this. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mass Pirate, pirates.org. A lot O-R-G. of information on there. Right. I love your yep. website. You're keeping it up to date. And yep. you can and see we'll, you're very active. So we love that. And we'll uh, post it up on our Facebook page. So anyone who's listening can, uh, can check that out as well. And, uh, yeah, we're going to take a quick break. If you want to call in, 617-606-4122. Um, we have some... F- uh, Somerville I, I, Stock Exchange yes, coming up Yes, next. from the Somerville Stock Exchange. And uh, and I see we have Garrett Kirkland here. Yeah, and he's got, working on some stuff. Yeah. No TSA and the MVTA. Yeah, we're going to get so into like, that, too. So we like to talk about that, that yeah. too. Because I, uh, to I happen anyway. to be at one of those security checkpoints, but I was at work with a whole group of kids behind me so they didn't stop me <laughs> but uh, thank god <laughs> yeah no i was fine obviously i was at work but you know <laughs> uh that shit's bullshit it's yeah we crazy. really have to resist that it's stuff. crazy yeah it's insane so uh so we'll we'll be talking about that a little bit later too so uh stay tuned listeners and uh call in and uh we'll be back